Hi everyone, Dr. Nemechek here. Uh, I've had a, a lot of just comments, questions, and people ask me to kind of review how I'm using the vagus nerve stimulator these days. So I thought I'd just give you a quick overview. And uh, what we'll do is talk about it from kind of kids on up age-wise, because it does change uh, according to age and, and maybe somewhat uh, with what we're, what we're trying to deal with. So in the kids with developmental delay or autism, or they've got you know, ADD, chronic depression, learning disorders, you know, these, the inability for the brain to recover and maintain itself is really predicated on an amount of systemic and, and neuroinflammation, or that is inflammation within the brain. Uh, this abnormal level of chemicals from your immune system called inflammatory cytokines, prevent the brain from properly repairing itself and rejuvenating itself. And so, <clears throat> now fortunately, in a lot of the little kids, say below 10, um, when you use our protocol of fish oil, olive oil, and you balance the gut using either inulin or rifaximin, uh, it seems to be enough. And they, uh, I would say, majority of them recover uh, fully without the assistance of a vagus nerve stimulator. We do have about 20% in my practice where in that age group, we have to add the VNS. Now, what does it do really? What are we doing here? So when you stimulate the vagus nerve at the ear, that signal only goes up, all right? It goes up, it stimulates your autonomics, then you get signals coming down both in the sympathetic pathway and the parasympathetic pathway, and it can help control inflammation in the body and uh, it's fairly potent, okay? And five minutes, once a day, uh, will give you a rather robust reduction in inflammatory cytokines over the next 24 hours or so. And in the kids, you only need it about once a day. So if we have kids who are on the protocol and they're recovering, but maybe one aspect is not recovering or it's kind of slow, uh, we'll add in the VNS once a day and 80, 85% of the patients we've surveyed have said they got a very positive response after that, once we added that. And so the whole protocol is trying to lower inflammation. And by adding in the VNS, we lower it a little bit more in the brain. All right. Now, if a kid is recovering very fast in all manner, there's no need to add it. But if it's kind of slow or partial recovery, that's when we add the VNS, just five minutes a day. Um, the VNS is very safe in children. Uh, they actually surgically implant these devices in children with severe epilepsy, and the devices run 24 hours a day. They've been doing this for about 20 plus years. So we know a lot about it. It's, it's actually very, very safe to do. Now, as we start moving up the age spectrum, say 10 to 20 year olds, uh, they're on the protocol with the same problems, ADD or developmental problems, or they have autism. Um, it starts becoming more and more likely that you need the VNS. And really in my mind, I'm late teens, I'm, I'm almost surprised if somebody recovers fully without the VNS. And so <clears throat> again, they only need five minutes a day, okay? You don't increase the dose or the time uh, as they get older, like you might say a, a medication or something like that. Um, now we get into the twenties, say, predominantly non-autistic patients, they've got POTS, they've got some other autonomic problem, they've had multiple concussions, uh, they're long hauler COVID uh, patients with a lot of neurological problems. Again, I use the core uh, protocol, fish oil, olive oil now in this age range, the inulin doesn't work, we just use rifaximin, and they all need five minutes of VNS a day uh, to get a full recovery. Uh, it's if you know, maybe some who are very mild type cases, they don't need it, but the majority who are gonna to travel to my office and get my help, they need five minutes a day. Um, now still, all the way up to this point, I haven't seen any cases that I can recall where five minutes, two or three times a day worked better. They might be out there, but for the most part, five minutes once a day is really quite a bit and gets the job done. Now, as we start moving up into the 30s and 40s, that's where things change. Um, 
Five minutes can help, but it's often not enough. Now we have studies in adults, say for instance with rheumatoid arthritis, five minute increments, um, four individual times through the day. Think of it like you're taking Tylenol through the day or something. And with each one, uh, there's an additive benefit in reducing inflammatory pain in a rheumatoid arthritis patient's hands, as well as an additive benefit in lowering the inflammatory chemicals in the bloodstream. And so and <clears throat> in the uh, 30s and 40s, again, I tend to, you know, basic protocol, fish oil, olive oil, rifaximin, they all need a VNS. Uh, and I start with once a day, and sometimes we might do two or three, depending on how severe they are. Uh, as you get up then now, we're in the 50s and 60s. Um, you know, five minutes, you, it's got, if you're doing five minute increments, it's gotta be um, uh, at least three, four times a day to, to get the more uh, severely affected people to recover. Or you can use more continuous, and my preferred way is like an hour to two hours a day, but it can't be a continuous current. It has to be a current that's toggling on and off, otherwise you'll develop what's called habituation. Habituation is where if you have too much of a current, just in time frame, the brain will ignore it. It'll just block the signal like white noise, okay? So the signal itself, if you're going for an hour or two, needs to be turning on and off uh, in, a, in a particular fashion. And that's what uh, uh, some of the, the more modern devices can do, and <clears throat> like we have here in the office. The, and then when you get up to above 60, pretty much everybody needs about two hours a day to recover. You know, if I go up even 60 year olds, and they have, or maybe even younger, but if somebody has chronic traumatic encephalopathy or CTE, this is what happens to, uh, say, athletes who have had recurrent injuries, um, they tend to do better at four hours a day in terms of recovery. And uh, I don't quite understand why, but they do. If I'm faced with somebody with Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, we're doing six hours a day, and they do much better in terms of recovery than at two or four. Again, I don't know why, it's a very practical thing that I've just observed over 20 plus years of doing this. Um, and we know, again, we have many, many, you know, there's like 150,000 adults with these vagus nerve stimulators implanted in their chest. And uh, those are going 24 hours a day on and off and it's very safe. So it's, it's very safe, it's very effective. Now, whether it's kids or adults, then people say, do I do this forever? Actually, the kids and young adults, once we get them to recover neurologically, they seem to not need the vagus nerve stimulator. Uh, and basically it's carrying the parasympathetics. Uh, the nerve itself is part of the nervous system. And you know, my, my belief is, I don't have evidence, but my belief is that the vagus nerve could recover and start functioning more normally and do what it should have been doing in the first place. And so we'll find after somebody recovers um, that they, they may not need it anymore. That's much less likely if you're in the 40s, 50s, or 60s, okay, or, or older. Um, I'll have patients though, say in their 40s or 50s, they're doing an hour or two of VNS a day, they get to recover. You know, I see them a year later on follow-up, just kind of touch and base kind of visit. And they'll say, yeah, you know, I still need it, but only like 30 minutes, maybe two or three times a week. I can kind of tell when I need it. So there, there is this lessening uh, of a dependence, if you want to put it that way, on needing that to maintain your state. Uh, I personally need two hours a day. Uh, otherwise, I, I'm just not going to function right. I had a, a lot of kind of old injuries from sports and some other events in my life. Uh, that I've recovered from and to maintain that I need two hours a day minimum. And so anyhow, I, I hope that's helpful for everybody, just kind of a broad review of kind of how I'm using all of that. And uh, other than that, everybody uh, have a nice day. Take care.